Welcome back to our Let's Play. Now, we tried to play Edge of Eternity, published by Dear Villagers, developed by Midgar Studios, a little bit ago. Um, I had a bug, and it stopped me very early on. And I posted that on to YouTube, and within minutes, the developer had chatted me through the Steam forums, or rather, not chatted me, but responded to me through the Steam forums to let everyone know that this bug was due to a new patch, they rolled back that patch, and they're going to fix it. And so one of the things that is always very exciting is when a developer really communicates through the early access process um, quickly and promptly. And I understand developers aren't watching their um, information, the forums, 24-7. And if you don't get a response in a few minutes, um, if it takes a few hours, things happen. But some developers will leave comments for days, weeks, and never respond to them at all. And to have someone respond so quickly shows me the love and attention that they're actually giving this game. And so I gave my spiel about why I'm excited for Edge of Eternity in my last video. If you'd like to see that, then I'll leave a link in the description. Um, I will say I'm going to go ahead and start fresh. That I don't know much about this game. I've played maybe the first five minutes, two minutes actual gameplay before the bug stopped me. Um, I know it's going to be a JRPG. I know that um, the art is great. From what I've heard, the voice acting is very enjoyable to listen to. I mean, just look at the screen. Look, This is an early access game, and there's so much love and detail. I want you to look at the armor that this person is wearing, the male. And just look at the design, the intricacies in that. Um, look at the um, shine on the metal portions. You can tell that his shoulder pad um, is either dulled or made of a different type of material. Um, and then look at the intricacies of the female's um, little attachments to her clothing. She's not in the same type of armor. She doesn't have the same type of detail and attention all over but it's certainly there where the clasp towards her vest or her tunic is um, the belt I do actually like the design of her hair a little bit better than his um, but both are great and so the attention that the art has received on this opening page and really from what I've seen is amazing um, and art isn't enough to get me excited about a game long term but it is a sign that the game is receiving love and attention the bit of the story that I've heard is really something that has me intrigued um, I'm going to let the scene play again you may have already seen it in the last video. You may have played this yourself. Um, if so, feel free to skip ahead. But if you haven't seen it, then watch it with me and I think that you'll be as intrigued as I am. So, here we go. Thirty years ago, strange metal airships appeared in our skies. We didn't know who they were, nor what they wanted. They first presented us with gifts small tokens of their incredible technology. In exchange, all they wanted was food. Then they asked us permission to mine our soils. And finally, they wanted to take our crystals from us. We refused. They answered with fire. A slaughter. The consort took into his hands to organize the resistance, recruit the people, band them together, train them to form an army capable of facing such an overwhelming power. At the price of many sacrifices, we finally broke through their defenses and managed to turn the tide. We were beginning to win this wretched war. 
That's when it struck. The corrosion. It quickly spread through our ranks, poisoning our bodies, twisting our limbs, warping us into some terrible caricature. Half organic, half machine. But we wouldn't yield. Despite the fatigue, the sickness, the hunger. Then, I got a letter from my sister. She told me that our mother had caught the corrosion. What would you have done in my place? Yeah, I thought so too. During one of the Archolites' most ferocious attack, I slipped my dog tags on someone else's body. And I slipped away. That's how I became a deserter. My sister and I were determined. We wouldn't leave our mother to die such a terrible death. But everything comes with a price. And there we go. Um, some still shots. I do like dialogue delivered in that method. Um, it's parsley, and maybe there'll be cutscenes added. But it is a good setup. Just our luck. Come closer, Darian. I can't hear you. And there they instruct us to actually start moving. If this storm keeps up, we won't make it to Hirelsor. We have to take shelter, Selene. I know the perfect place for that. It's also a shortcut. You can't mean... Well, that's just great. One of the things that... How much time do we have? To save Mom, I mean. She was stable when we left. I bought us some time. A few months, I think. After that, I fear the pain will be too much to endure. Even for her. No time to lose, then. I just can't wait to be there. Sarcasm? No, I'm just cold. So I'm actually going to stop here to talk for just a moment. One of the things that people take for granted is just getting into a game and going. Um, I don't know if you have ever seen any video game design um, tutorials, but I remember going back to Mario and them talking about the design of a starting level in Mario. And there's quite a bit of blocks that teach you what to do. You, the game actually doesn't start until the character moves right. They can't move left, but they move right and the screen moves forward. Okay, great. You can't get past the first enemy without learning to jump. And these are things that we do now with great detail, but we don't actually um, learn a game until we start playing in most cases. Now, back in uh, the 80s, 90s, games would ship with manuals. Some games still come with manuals digitally. Um, but the people didn't read those. They want to just jump in and play the game. So the game has to instruct you what to do. And going back to that Mario example, there's a part where you jump over the first pit. And they placed a hidden block right above the um, area that signified you were jumping too early to kind of stop you. And there was the extra life. Um, and it would stop you from making that jump too early. You had to jump after the block. And of course, if you jumped too late, um, you would fall to your death. And so they were teaching you the game. Um, I don't, I don't want to name games, or, but there was a game where the cutscene was opening up, and it had a lot of dialogue, and I was just sitting back enjoying the dialogue. But what I didn't realize is that the entire time I was supposed to be moving forward. It didn't tell me that. This game had that. It had the cutscene, you had the talk, um, we need to move forward, and then allowed me to do so. And so that's something that I don't think a lot of people realize because we get play games, we get so good at them, um, but we uh, we get good at them, we don't think about what we have to do, but a new player comes to a game 
and it can be really frustrating if the entire five minute conversation occurs that you're supposed to be moving through and then you end up having to slog through five minutes of just slow movement or an environment that you do nothing in afterwards because you discover after the fact you should be moving. So just congratulations to the developer and every developer who takes the first few minutes of their game to push their players in the direction they want to go until the player feels more comfortable with what they want to do. And so sorry to stop and talk about that, but Did that's something that's important to me. Ever see someone die from the corrosion? Yes. What about you? I have. No need to talk about it further then. <sighs> Even if she's putting on a brave face, I'm sure mom's sickness must weigh heavily on her shoulders. Come. The entrance is just over there. Okay. And so we have the stalwart character and your character. Um, you can start feeling the characters out right now. And so here we are. This is where it didn't load last time. And here we load. Yes, I'm happy. You told me yesterday that we were going to Hiralsor. Is there some kind of cure to be found there? Not exactly, but I have a trustworthy contact there with reliable information. How trustworthy exactly? I would trust him with my life. I wasn't expecting such a dramatic answer. All right, and we earn the achievement first steps. So here we are, entrance of the cave. I wonder if I need to change my graphic settings. That's really bright. Uh, maybe lower something, maybe change something. Um, okay. And so this cave. To me, it doesn't receive the same attention to detail, but again, it's early access, and this is an area that is probably quickly traveled through. Um, maybe my graphics is having an issue. Um, but in most cases, people don't stop and look around like this. I just wanted to do it to give everyone a chance to examine it and really get the feel of what is being presented here. So we move forward. We have that wonderful yellow dot telling us where to go. That's another design entry. When I played MMOs, we didn't have quest helpers. And I found it very frustrating. So, Darian, how does it feel being back here after all these years? A little anxious. I wonder if it is still around. Ah, Pronoun I know game. who you're talking about. Really? That thing alone killed half of the miners who worked here. Where did I get the stupid idea I could avenge them all by myself? Don't forget the part where I come to the rescue. No chance I could forget that, especially with you around to remind me. Get some history and setting placement. That's fun. Okay. Let's take a look. We have a treasure chest here. Get a potion of healing ally. I think I will take a moment to adjust the graphics. I don't like the glare that's coming through. Alright. So, custom. Let's go down to medium. Okay, so it's just ambient aura. Let's go back. Turn down the bloom. The bloom is the, the issue I'm having. Alright, it's still here. So that's a critique that I have. Um, and it may be personal to my computer, maybe my own personal taste. But I don't like the glare. This strip sure takes me down memory lane. Isn't that. My old wooden sword. Yes. I had to drop it during our escape, remember? Celine, watch out! And here it comes. So here's our first battle. So tutorial. First steps in Edge of Eternity battles. 
ATB bar, which some people familiar with Final Fantasy other types of games will know about, fills with time to determine who will play next. When the bar is full, the character or the enemy is able to attack or use a spell. It's pretty basic stuff. We have our action bar. Now that looks more like an MMORPG. Enemy status, HP. During an action, the ATB bar is replaced by the cast bar. Okay. Fun. We're going to continue. Attacking during a battle. Click on the attack icon or press the shortcut A on the keyboard. Now I am playing with the keyboard, not a gamepad. Um, but I imagine that the gamepad is going to be more fluid for a lot of players. Um, really, I'll go back and forth depending on the setup. During combat, you're able to attack, use spells, use items, and move your characters. Ooh, movement in battle. That I like. The first action is attack. This inflicts damage on a single target enemy, and it consumes the ATB bar, but not MP. So, one, click attack, two, choose the target. Alright, and so here we have it. I'm going to go ahead and do the shortcut they recommend and then mouse over had a menu pop up but I didn't read it <laughs> you or an enemy receive damage skills and actions often deal damage to entities when the entity's HP reaches zero the entity will be KO'd until the end of the battle okay so we have both characters and here we learn their names Celine and Darion you know they may have said their names earlier but I didn't catch it You'll see that the ATB bar fills very quickly. It's not a slow filling bar, but it does stop. Um, so wait mode basically in other games. And that's not a bad thing at all. I know that many people don't like wait mode in those types of games, but I will often play wait mode because I am a slow player, as you've probably noticed. All right. HP is a bit hurt, and we attack again. So it's really holding our hand. The only way for us to progress through this attack or through this enemy is just to use our basic attacks. We're not bombarded with options. What we can do is very, very clear. Um, and so it looks like it is once again taking the time to teach us how to play the game. Always a great thing in the first few minutes because they're teaching us but they're not overburdening us with tutorials we have to do this but we don't have to sit through a long tutorial on exactly what to do so this is the type of learning experience I do like and so here we have our combat results we have two level five characters um, their weapons I'm thinking that weapon levels have something to do with the play of this game, which can be fun. Um, and a resurrects revive a KO'd ally. And getting a resurrection to overcome our early you stuff okay, is Celine? Good. A bit surprised, that's all. <sighs> I didn't expect that these mines would still harbor golems after all these years. And they're just as ferocious as before. It's a good thing you already knew how to use magic, else we wouldn't be here to talk about it. And on top of that, I was the one who dealt with Mom afterwards. What can I say? You're a saint, Celine. So, they're going to tell us about the Battle Victory screen. And so, this type of tutorial I was talking about, we can just skip the tutorial if we already know how to play. But it's here to explain things for us afterwards. Characters can earn experience and level up to increase their statistics. Combat rating is established according to combat difficulty and length. The reward, the experience, and gold received at the end of the fight depend on the rating. And I'll tell you my feelings about that in a moment. Shows the XP meter and the character level. Weapons can also earn experience and level up. The battle duration used to calculate the combat rating and battle reward and then here is battle reward loot max two items you can get equipment crystals or consumables so in this game they apply 
the rating, how well you did, to the rewards that you get. And this could be hit or miss. I prefer it not to be in a game. I prefer static rewards. And when I say static, I mean you're going to get a the what you get regardless of how you perform. There is a random chance for loot, but the experience is the same. The tri the gold is the same. The reason I like that is one, I don't always I don't always understand what goes into the rating system, and two, in JRPGs often there's a lot of grinding, and that means that you always have to perform at your best to get the best rewards. Grinding is by its nature very methodical, very something you do while you're probably listening to music, audiobook, watching a show, um, talking to someone else, doing lots of stuff. I do like to have other activities during the grind. During the actual game, during the story, I'm playing great. So if this game minimizes the grind, if you feel like you're constantly prepared for the next challenge, then yay. If this game doesn't require a lot of effort to get maximum rating, also yay. Um, so I guess we're going to see exactly um, what to expect here. So again, lots of talking. I just wanted to get my ideas out regarding this and the other systems. But overall, I'm still very much enjoying what I'm seeing. So let's continue. And so we have established more background between these two siblings. And if it wasn't clear by appearance, it appears she can use magic, as was indicated in the conversation. Um, he's talked about having swords for some time. Here, we're going to save the game. I'm going to overwrite this. This I had saved um, on the glitch system, because somehow it allowed me to save during the loading screen. But now that we have these files, I'm going to go ahead and overwrite those. And I usually play with two files, alternating between the two of them, um, particularly when a game is in early access. I never understood how the crystals worked anyway. I mean, I learned how to use them, harness their power and all that, but as for the source of their powers, beats me. Uh, weren't you instructed in the way of the crystals during your military <laughs> training? <laughs> we were expected to fight, not ask questions. More world building. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound bitter. I don't know what to make of his personality. The front lines, I mean. Maybe another time, if you don't mind. I'd rather have you explain the crystals to me. So why are you interested now? I know, for tutorials. But here we go. You can loot crystals during quests and battles. These crystals can be slotted onto weapons. Oh, to unlock spells or improve your character's statistics. One crystal is linked to... A single weapon, not to the character. Um, open the main menu and select the crystal tab. You just received a crystal for Celine's weapon. Switch character to select Celine's weapon. Okay. Crystal, Celine's weapon. Always start with the bigger crystal. Click on it to open the list of crystals available. Okay. So, Shining Shard. Crystal. Plus one magic, plus five MP. Firelift 1, Selene. Inflict magic damage on an enemy. Okay. So press Y on the controller or tab on the keyboard to open the character menu. Alright. I'm going to open the character menu, select the crystals like they said. Switch character just like they said. Start with the bigger crystal. So we have Shining Shard. No item for that. Back. Alright, and so we can see this is placed on the Dawn Shard staff. Right here. Now, I like this system. I don't know if I'll keep liking this system, but I do like this system. 
Um, in my last video I explained how Final Fantasy IX was my favorite game, and that did have some item placements. Um, really the big one was Final Fantasy VII with its materia. And then you have Final Fantasy X with its level up system in a grid um, or a sphere grid that is very reminiscent of this. Um, I'm not saying that this was inspired by any of that, but what I'm saying is this is reminding me of a combination of all of that. And I really, really like that. Interacting with your character for abilities and for character customizations or stats, or in this case your weapon, is a good thing for me. I really enjoy that. And so, it appears I have my Shining Shard increased. Um, let's see, Crystal Slot and Crystal Element. Maybe I misunderstood something. So my Shining Shard is what I read. That's what we got. And then the Ember of Strength increased physical damage of one. Active Slot, Active Bonuses. And so... The weapon itself grows and gets the ability of the crystals, I think. But I don't really know. So but we're going to keep playing. Oh, achievement unlocked. Crystal bearer. Okay. Okay. Let's keep going. Oh. I am going back to save. Do I save spam? sometimes especially when I'm learning a game and I suppose not by the traditional sense um, I don't keep reloading to make sure I get what I want I guess the term is also save scumming but I do save often to make sure that I don't lose too much progress use fire lift on the energy wall so that's how I interact with it Okay, so it took a little bit longer than I'd like to get rid of that. To think this sad piece of work haunted my nightmares for years. You sound disappointed. Yeah, he's smaller than I remembered him. Uglier, too. Hey, isn't he wounded? Your I like when Darian has emotion. Him, but don't let your guard down. I don't want to have to take another blow from you. Remember us, creep? Ten years I've been waiting for this. Much better than his exposition. I much prefer I than when his character is interacting with the world rather than we can do this. just acting as a source of exposition. Its magic is almost completely depleted. It is holding up by the sheer strength of its will. Okay. So those aren't body parts. I was about to say we have different body parts, but it looks like there are small little golems behind him. Let's go ahead and attack. Let's see, can I attack one of those? Yeah, behind him. So rows may not matter as much. So we have fire lift. And we can see Celine has 1,258 MP. This will cost 250. So um, roughly five uses. I don't know if MP regenerates after, but we're going to go ahead and find out. And we're going to cast it on there. While casting your character's action bar will turn red. When the red bar is full, your character will cast a spell. The character can also be interrupted by physical attacks during this phase. So here, she's casting Fire Lift. Goes up and does quite a bit of damage. Okay, so that's dead. Let's go and get rid of this other golem and hope that he doesn't summon more. Oh! Selene and Darian taking damage. I just want to see. So, she is at 1008. And we're going to see if she regenerates any. He likes picking on her. Alright, so no, she does not. That's okay. You can see he's injured. I'm wondering if that's from last time, because his bar, green bar isn't full. And here we go. Fire lift one again. That's a decent amount of damage. Now that's some good battle music going on. It keeps us invigorated. Oh, 
don't want to use all my MP. But I am getting hurt quite a quite a bit. Um, Darian's taking quite a blow. I think I'm actually going to heal. Potions are immediate. Alright, good amount of damage. Looks like he's barely standing. I'm going to attack. And that is that. Okay. So we've got a rating of five stars. Got an antidote. Oh, I hate poison effects. I hope that doesn't mean we're gonna need it. At least I can put that episode behind me. Personal now, revenge. All we have to do is cross the Grog Forest and we'll reach Hirasor in the uh Don't be so eager to change the subject, Darian. Even if we destroyed that creature, you still owe me your life. Oh come on. That was a long time ago. It's history now. Is that so? Should I remind you that because I saved your life, Mom learned about my powers and sent me to the cloister against my will? Eight long years of... Oh, I knew you'd say that. I'm sorry, alright? Is that good enough for you? Can you let it go now? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I'm sorry. I'll let it go. I won't bring it up again. Thank you. I'm just saying you owe me your life. <laughs> Some good old cheesy dialogue. In Edge of Eternity, time flows as you progress. The clock at the top of the compass shows you the current time. Time affects NPCs, the presence of monsters, and the quests available. Some are only available at night, some only during the day. Time also affects essential resistances in battle. So. Another good design, this one I really enjoy from um, the Xenoblade series. Um, really what made the best effect of it was Xenoblade Chronicles X, I believe. And that was a fun game, I enjoyed it. Um, but games that introduce times, or basically... Uh, Time flows, weather flows, those just add to the elements. So we have a new leather armband. And here we're going to learn about equipping. You just received gloves for Darien. Select Darien's tab. You can loot... Uh, can't talk. You can loot equipment during quests, battles. This equipment affects your character statistics when equipped. Open the main menu and select the equipment tab. Check on the gloves. I really can't talk. Or click on the glove slot to open the list of gloves available for Darien. A new icon appears. Or a new icon appear. It should be appears. On equipment that has been recently looted. Okay. I have no idea why that paragraph was the bane of me. But it was. We're done. And we can move on. So, press the tab button, we're going to go to our equipment slot, you can equip your characters with armor in the equipment menu, you can also, no, I should have read that faster, oh well. So here we have the equipment. And that uh, looks like crystal information. I want to take a look at him. His slot's available. We don't. We just don't have a crystal for him. Let's take a look at our inventory. Weapons. Crystal, which we're already familiar with. Key objects. Potion resurrects ether antidote. I mean nothing is incredibly new and to have it be incredibly new is always risky everybody can realize what a potion is what an ether is what an antidote is who's played so many other jrpgs but resurrects 
uh, new name, old effect, revive a KO'd ally. So we're really sticking to the basics in this. I'm liking the character progression that I'm seeing. Um, I, we're just going to keep going. Okay, so Shining Shard. Attack, Magic Defense, and Defense. It is for Darien, and we get a Lightning Strike. So back to the menu we go. Okay. Here we go, Shining Shard Crystal. And... We're going to keep going. We have some Dunron there. They're yellow. Do they attack us? They do. I love to use the Force this way. You or an enemy is occupying a nexus with a healing crystal. Decorative elements can affect battles in Edge of Eternity. Here a green crystal periodically heals. And again, I should read faster, but I don't. So we see we have new options. We have move. We have flee, and those may have been there before, I just didn't notice. Um, it hasn't really explained to me the benefit of battle positioning, as we saw with the golems. There was no issue with me attacking the back row. Um, it looks like we fully gathered our MP. I wonder if that was a result of visiting a, a save point or um, in between every battle. We're going to go ahead and cast. You're now casting a spell. It's going to teach us that again. Oh, and something I didn't notice before, up in the upper top of the screen, you can get the description. So, we know that Lightning Strike 1 is uninterruptible, will target an enemy, has a range of 1, so that's where our movement comes in, has an element of thunder, is an instant cast, has medium fatigue, which we'll see, um, power 120, and it just gives a slight description, inflict a 2-hit combo on an enemy. So here we go. All right. I'm going to move next to the crystal. Okay. So we're already next to the crystal according to this hexagonal layout. Just do a normal attack then. I want to take a look at this range of two so based on the information I'm getting I could move her back and still be able to cast with that in fact that's what I'm gonna do and with that Z not two. with that theoretically she should be out of range for certain attacks so here, attack is X'd out. That's fine. Did you see he had to move? He's chasing her. Um, I'll go ahead and do a lightning strike again. This is quite a bit of his amount of pool. And she will finish him off with fire lift. Okay, their experience goes up. I only got four stars out of five. I could have done that better. All right, pursuing Celine's master. You know what? I think that is a good place to call it. I hope this has been informative for you. Um, I hope that it's been entertaining for you. As I said with my last one, if you like it, li click the like. If you disliked it, click the dislike. And also leave a comment telling me what you liked or didn't like. I really use that information to help me decide where I want to go with my next videos. So if you want to see more Edge of Eternity, if you don't want to see that let me know um, but I do thank you for watching and until next time have a great day